With the introduction of Azir into the game, Riot has introduced some incredibly unique mechanics through the use of summoning soldiers to do things for you, as well as the ability to create towers. Azir has shown to be quite a strong champion so far. These are my first impressions and analysis of the new upcoming champion. Now, Azir's kit was a little bit confusing for me at first. His W allows you to summon a sand soldier that lasts for 9 seconds. As you summon soldiers, you use your other skills to interact with them. His Q makes the soldiers dash to a point, dealing damage and slowing targets hit. And his E makes you dash to a soldier, and if you hit a champion, you knock them up for half a second and gain a pretty substantial shield. The soldiers can auto attack as a replacement to your autos, and their damage scales off of AP. His ult creates a wall that damages and knocks back enemies, but allies are actually able to walk through that wall, while opponents are not able to walk through the wall. Although that wall can create some crazy kiting combos, the range on it is really really short, especially when compared to the rest of his kit that has quite long ranges. You can even use his soldiers to auto attack towers without being in range for the tower to hit you, and his passive, oh man is passive. On paper, it seems crazy overpowered, and in reality, yeah, it is, it's crazy overpowered, but not for the reason you might expect. Although being able to build a tower can lead to some completely game-changing plays, by creating an incredible siege fallback or perhaps a defensive point on the map or something like that, it does only last for one minute and can be killed quite quickly, so it's not like there's no counterplay. And although it is still really really good, the fact is is that the tower creating passive is completely useless during the laning phase, making the tower building passive not so much overpowered, just really good and really cool. But what makes this passive so overpowered is the attack speed scaling that it gives. It also gives you 2% bonus attack speed for every 1% cooldown reduction that you have. And although his soldiers do not proc on hit effects, they scale with attack speed and AP. So hitting that 40% CDR cap with AP items gives you some amazing damage since you get 80% free attack speed, which is equivalent to 2400 gold worth of stats. However, his AP scaling is fairly low to compensate for that, but either way, an AP CDR focused build seems to be the best way to go. Originally, I did think that the soldiers could proc on hit effects, so I was building things like Nash's Tooth and Lichbane, but since they don't, those items are very obviously poor buys on him, so don't follow the builds that I'm using in the clips that I'm showing. His laning phase consists of a lot of poke with very high range and fairly low mana cost abilities, with the potential to all in by knocking someone up by dashing in. He seems to be and feels like a solo laner. I played him mid when I tried him out, but his low mana cost mean you don't really need blue buff, and his high range, easy poke, as well as somewhat tanky base stats mean that I think he would actually be a really good top laner. Once you build a Thienes, you will pretty much never run out of mana, and his matchups versus a melee champion in lane is just absurdly easy since your poke is so long range, as well as you have mobility and a lot of disengage. I did have some good success with him in mid though, so it might still be possible to play in mid lane, but from what I can tell, he seems to be a top laner. He doesn't have the crowd control to be a support, and he doesn't have any AD scaling to be an AD carry of course, and as far as jungle goes, that may be a wild card. His jungle clear speed is not that bad, and his ganks can be okay since he does have a gap closer crowd control as well as a follow up slow, but I don't think he'll be a good jungler since his ultimate isn't really that good for ganks, it's much better for kiting and disengaging. As far as teamfights go, I actually kind of like the way he plays in teamfights, due to the high range nature of his soldiers, as well as the ability to move them around quite a bit, comboed with some cooldown reduction which you will likely pick up by that time teamfights happen, it allows you to stay really far back in teamfights most of the time, so you can contribute without putting yourself too much at risk, and then as soon as things look good, you can jump in with your E. Now, using his passive effectively to create towers proved to be quite difficult. Using it on your own towers doesn't seem to be that good, as it is very easy for the opponents to kill if they get a minion wave on it, so using it defensively doesn't work that well, while on the contrary, using it offensively seemed to be absolutely ridiculous. You can push down mid or bot or top, whatever lane you're sieging, up to the inhibitor turret, and then you use the passive on the inner turret, and then if the opponents try to fight you, you can just kite back to the tower, and then the tower can just basically just hit them the whole fight as a lot of players 
won't really respect the damage even though it's about as strong as a regular tower anyways. So it can lead to an easy place to kite through as you wait for another wave to siege, or more likely it's going to lead to an easy teamfight win if the opponents go in on you while you're sieging. So it just creates kind of this stuck between a rock and a hard place situation for the opponents, which is really really good for your team. But overall, he doesn't seem to be crazy overpowered. He has a fairly high skill cap and his passive requires a lot of strategy and coordination to take advantage of. So I don't think he's overpowered, just really good. One of the main weaknesses that he kind of struggles with is a lack of burst damage in his kit as a whole. So if he was going to be released in his current state, he would probably be viable in competitive play, but in solo queue have a fairly low win rate due to the difficulty of using his kit effectively. But Riot definitely succeeded in making an incredibly dynamic, unique champion champion that is just straight up so friggin cool. His kit interactions feel amazing and although he does have some minor bugs on the PBE right now, those will most likely be fixed by the time he's launched. Anyways, my name is Jeremy and that's it for my video on Azir. I recently just moved into my dorms at UC Berkeley and so right now my internet is really really good, so I'm streaming a lot. Be sure to check me out over at twitch.tv slash jeremy underscore gaming curios. If you enjoyed this video as well, feel free to check out some of my others on the screen right now, or stay connected at facebook.com slash gaming curios. Drop a like, share this video, and make sure to subscribe for some more awesome content in the future, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.